Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel for another Nocturnal Review. Um, before we get started, of course, you know the gist. You know, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, please leave a comment. And uh, any of the platforms I'm on that you'd like to follow me on, Instagram, Twitter, BookBub, Goodreads, all the links are down below in the uh, comment section. Or not the comment section, in the description, I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to make this review as quick as uh, quick as possible because I don't want to run too long. The last one ran just a little longer than I meant for it to, but it was uh, a good length. So, and this one's a very different review. Halloween is just around the corner, as I'm sure you know. It's you know, I'm filming this right now, and it's Thursday night, late Thursday night. So it'll be up, I think, either really late in the night or very early in the morning. You know, Friday. So it's the day before Halloween when you're seeing this probably so halloween's tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and just say it's friday since it probably is by the time this video goes up so you know happy friday um and i'm actually going to do something a little different this is not your typical review uh because well not the typical review that i've done i mean so i'm i'm running over myself like a train wreck here just in a good mood right now too so a little energetic. All right. So for this review, I'm not exactly uh, reviewing a gothic novel nor a typical horror novel. It is horror, but it's uh, based on real life events. I'm going to say alleged for probably the rest of this video because I. Uh, it's claims of a real event. So if you believe it, that's great. If you don't believe it, that's also great too. You can still probably enjoy the book though, because you know, if you don't believe it to be true, you can just think of it as a work of fiction. So, and if you do believe it to be true, that's awesome. Um, to me, it doesn't really matter to the people involved. Of course it would matter, but to me, um, I'm just reviewing the book. I have my own opinions about it and I don't know if I'm really going to say much on those. So, I mean, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, let's just get started. So I'm going to, going to review the book *The Haunted* by um, Robert Curran with Jack and Janet Smurl and Ed and Lorraine Warren. And this is a re-release copy from around the time the movie *The Conjuring* came out. This book was originally published in 1988. Uh, it is based upon the alleged Smurl haunting that occurred from 1974 to 1989, the year after the book uh, was published. So the event was still going on while the book was being written and was released. Um, if you don't know who the Warrens are, the Warrens are purported to be um, like probably the most celebrated or most famous uh, or infamous, depending upon your point of view, uh, demonologists in the United States. They both passed away now. Um, Lorraine Warren just passed away last year in 2019. Her husband was like in 2006, 2005, something like that. Um, whether if you think that they're, uh, and I'm going to cuss a little bit in this one, I think if you think that their cases were pure and utter bullshit, that's fine. If you don't believe that, that's fine too. I'm not here to say one way or the other. So I'm just going to report on what the book is and if anybody's interested in reading it, please check it out because I do believe it is available in Kindle form, probably a Nook form. I haven't checked that. Um, obviously, paperback. I'm sure you can find an old vintage one out somewhere. So let's just kick into this uh, into this book. So Jack and Janet Smurl um, move into a duplex at 328 330 Chase Street in West Pittston, uh, Pennsylvania with their children. Now, I think they only had like two children at the time and then well, after they moved in they had twins. So they had like four girls total while they were living here. Uh, living there, not here. Uh, later on they were joined by um, in the other half of the duplex uh, Jack's parents, John and Mary, who were uh, very elderly um, as far as I know, the girl, the daughters of Jack and Janet Smurl are still alive. As, as far as I know, Janet is. Jack died a while back, I guess. So I thought I'd give a little bit of that update right there. 
the Smurls were pillars of the community in uh, West Pittston. Uh, they were involved with, in, you know, such as the Lions Club and, you know, and their church and other, you know, seemingly, you know, typical American wholesome, you know, activities and such. Trying to find where I left off in my notes. Usually there's so much for me to remember with the book, what I write down, what I don't write down, that I just can't memorize all my notes. I'm sorry that I do that. It's just there's a lot going on in my head. Uh, so anyway, they they lived pretty much a pretty ordinary life. So, but when they moved into the house on Chase Street, they uh, gradually start to experience some very odd occurrences and um, just very weird and unfortunate things. Like they had newly welded pipes because I guess. I think it was Jack Smurl is very good welder or something or very experienced welder and he um did all the welding and the pipes were perfectly fine and they burst and stuff. I think this happened several times. Um there was a mysterious stain on a newly purchased carpet uh on Mary and John's side. They it was a grease stain, I guess, and they Clean, tried to clean it out and it just would not disappear they ultimately just dumped the rug and got a new one you know it doesn't seem too odd but it's kind of unfortunate the uh television set on several occasions it would you know there'd be a television set in this rural home that would either burst into flames erupt in sparks or just start glowing for no apparent reason even when they weren't even plugged in so I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty freaky right there. If that happened, I would, you know, take off running for the hills, probably. I wouldn't just shrug that off, but, you know. Um, and also, Jack and Janet's bathtub, because they redid their entire bathtub, because I think they did a lot of renovations on this uh, duplex, a lot of work on it. Their brand new tub was, like, covered in, like, claw scratches all over and they could not explain why it was very weird and this it was just newly brought in was perfectly fine and then suddenly it just started getting scratches i think it was over the way they inferred in the book they just mentioned it you know in this one little bit they inferred that it, it happened it happened they noticed it and it kept happening for a while i don't know for how long though so um you know other stuff you know was going on and they'd, they'd see shadowy figures they'd hear voices there was an argument that john and mary smurl heard maybe it was just mary i don't know but they heard jack and janet arguing with such foul language that you know they thought you know being catholic that you know it was just very kind of a no-no to you know use such foul language and they were like they were even surprised that they'd even you know go that far and so mary smurl was very upset with her son and her daughter-in-law and they weren't even arguing uh jack and janet were not even arguing or at least they were it was very small arguments it wasn't violent you know with very foul language and i guess even like you know the f word which i'm not going to drop here was dropped I try i try not to say that word here on youtube so um, <clears throat> but the weirdest thing besides the shadowy figure that would travel from one end of the duplex to the other, Janet would see it and then her mother-in-law would see it and they'd, you know, confide in each other, was, uh, things started getting really out of hand when the oldest daughter, who I think's name was Dawn, her confirmation was coming up and they were preparing for her confirmation and... Janet and her and I'm thinking at least one of the other daughters or something like that was in the kitchen and boom the uh light fixture fell and this was a huge light fixture very heavy it just fell suddenly and hit the hit the floor I think and they hit under hit underneath the table one of the daughters was partially injured but nothing but she didn't have a broken arm I think her arm was just injured but it wasn't broken luckily so that's when things started to really escalate and stuff and at one point jack smurl was raped by what they are calling a succubus a you know a demon that sexually abuses uh men so whereas an incubus would be a spirit or demon that sexually uh abuses a woman so <clears throat> 
So all this activity was going on in their home, but it was not the only place because, and it wasn't only them who saw it because they would go off camping trying to get away from everything and it would follow them camping. And they went camping several times throughout the uh, things discussed in the book. And even while they went camping, some of the neighbors heard horrifying screams coming from the house when nobody was there. And they would call to make sure, oh, maybe they came back early. No. They would hear about this after they came back. And so Janet was just getting at her wits end. So she started researching the occult and stuff and and paranormal and supernatural things, trying to find answers for it. Eventually a neighbor, I think it was a neighbor, or it was a professor. It was a professor. I'm mixing the, the TV movie. There is a TV movie, by the way, up with the book a little bit. Um, it was a professor she talked to on the telephone told her about the Warrens and he gave um, gave her their number. So she so she calls them up and they have the Warrens come and they come with a team and they observe and they document all the happenings and they investigate it. It's all very much detailed in the book. I don't want to give too much away. Um, they eventually are, you know, they recommend they should, you know, contact the clergy and have them come and bless the house. They had a lot of problems with them. And uh, eventually the Warrens brought in uh, Father Robert McKenna, who uh, is no longer alive either, who later became a bishop, to perform a couple exorcisms. And uh, yeah, so I don't want to give too much away. But the book is written not in the tip, it's not written in a typical narrative. It's written um, like it starts out like a bit of, you know, like a piece of journalism where. The report where the author is giving um, some background information and then he goes into testimonies and interviews and statements from neighbors and co-workers and stuff and even from the Warrens. It even briefly documents uh, a um, paranormal investigator in training. They refer to him as the apprentice demonologist his very short journey into this field before uh he leaves and it tells why but it was not written in the typical narrative like the book in a dark place which i've read um which is the haunting in connecticut case or the snedeker case which i'll do a review on that sometime that's written as a narrative like you know like a novel whereas this is more of a more like kind of like documentation, like a news package, like a documentary. But it was written by Robert Curran, who was a journalist at one time. I don't know if he still is. I don't know any of his background, but this was his first book. So he heavily uh, covered it. And there's even photographs in the book, and you even get to see a photograph of him. Let's see if I can find that photograph. Might be too dark to even see. That's that's the author right there. That's Robert Curran. So, but it's an interesting book, and um, I will say, if you're Catholic, or if you're not Catholic, I mean, if you have some other faith and if you believe in uh, the paranormal and stuff, you might look at it and be like, "That doesn't make any sense. Why would they go about it like that?" Or, mm, "I don't believe that's how you know that." how that works or that's how you should go about it the warrants went about their investigations very in a very catholic way and most it seems like most of their cases were always catholic families except for i'm thinking the uh the parent family which the conjuring was based off of them and their experiences um they weren't really churchgoers but they were christians nonetheless but it seems like a majority of their cases, they always uh, end up going in and helping Catholic families. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting. It's like, well, what about the other people who aren't Catholic, though? So, I, I mean, I don't know. I was like, does this only happen to Catholic families? I, I mean, I, I've watched the TV show Haunting, which they did not cover this case, at least in the seven seasons that I watched from. But... I mean, I've seen the TV movie, and there is a TV movie. It came out in, like, 1990, and it was based mostly off the book, but it does mention 
something that happened. It does mention that after the family moved out of their new house, or moved out of the duplex, moved to a new house, they did finally get a sanctioned exorcism from the Catholic Church. And uh, I guess it cleared up everything. And they still claim today, the members of the family who are still alive, that this all ha that this stuff did happen. And I think one of the daughters, I saw it in a video that was talking about it, is actually a paranormal investigator now. So that's interesting. So I don't know if you guys believe in this stuff or not. I do believe, me personally, I do believe in the supernatural. And I there are so many unexplained things in the world. I have had even experiences of my own. But they have been nothing like this or any of the famous hauntings, which I'm glad because, I mean, I'd probably run. <sighs> I'd be terrified of my, out of my wits. But, you know, I think a lot of things are exaggerated, and I think if this is true, I'm not going to say if I believe it is or not. If it is true, I'm sure it was exaggerated somewhat. So, I mean, hoax, maybe, maybe not, who knows, you know. Only those who were there will know. So you can believe or not. But, you know, it's still an interesting read regardless. So if you're a non-believer but you're interested in, you know, paranormal stories, you can treat it as a piece of fiction. If you are a believer, you can treat it as a piece of fact. If you're on the fence, you know, you can draw your own conclusions. So that's pretty much it. So uh, I wanted to get at least one more video out before Halloween. I have a couple reviews planned in the future. Um, so I hope that everybody has a happy and safe Halloween. Um, and a blessed Samhain. And if you follow Celtic New Year versus, you know, like calendar New Year, happy New Year So to those people. So, you know. Um, I might do a TBR video at some point going over books that I want to read within the next year. Um... So, or, you know, between this Halloween and next Halloween. So, you know, it could cover books that I want to read in November, from, you know, November through to, you know, Halloween or whenever. Or, you know, books I want to read within the year of 2021. So, you know, we'll see. Anyway, um, that's all I have. So, have a good day night day afternoon whenever you're seeing this have a happy and safe halloween wear your masks um probably should stay home but you know i don't have any right to tell you what to do um but you know watch some scary movies have some popcorn eat some candy if, if you drink a beer you know have a beer i don't know so have some witch's brew you know so you know stay safe and stay spooky until next time Bye-bye.